What is going on, everybody? It is your boy Hobo back again with more NFL predictions. Uh, what week is it now? Week six? Yeah, that's pretty epic. We are flying through the season. We're only two weeks away from being halfway done with the whole damn thing, and that makes me really, really sad. However, we've got some football to break down. First, I'm going to let you know what teams have their bye weeks this week. The Bears, the Colts, the Raiders, the Bills. We will not be hearing from them this week. But tonight, Thursday, October 10th, we have a uh, disappointing meeting between the 2-3 and three New York Giants and the 5-0 and oh New England Patriots. Obviously, he's a Giants fan. I'd like to say we're going to win this game. But the Patriots are 21-2 and two in October since 2014. They're 5-0. and oh. They have an interception in every single game. They have the best defense in professional football. And the Giants are the Giants. We have no players healthy other than Daniel Jones and Golden Tate. Saquon Barkley's out. Evan Ingram's out. Sterling Shepard's out. You look on the defense, we've got guys missing for the season. Our backup running back is out. We have a whole lot of issues. And the Patriots are going to walk all over the Giants in this game. It's not even going to be close. Um, and that makes me very sad because as a Giants fan, I want to say we're going to win every game and go to the Super Bowl and win. But then reality kicks in. And I realize we're going to get our asses handed to us. And it won't be very fun. But the Patriots are going to, be going to extend their winning streak to 6. And head to 6-0. and And represent the AFC in the undefeated club. Sunday, October 13th. Tampa Bay Buccaneers hosting the Carolina Panthers. Panthers are 3-2. and two, Bucks are 2-3. and three. So the Buccaneers, they just beat um, these Rams that you're watching on your screen right now. And then they also, you know, when you, when you look at the Panthers, which these, these teams already played, did they not? I believe they did. And the, the Buccaneers won that game. I mean, I, I could be wrong. I don't really remember. It's been... Uh, there's been a lot of football, okay? Don't don't hurt me. But um, what's his face there? Their rookie quarterback for Carolina, uh, Allen. I can never remember his for Kyle Allen. I think it is. He is what four and zero in in every single one of his starts since 2018. And apparently, the statistic says Carolina is zero and nine in all other games. So that's ridiculous. Um, he's given him a spark, and I mean, I, I love people saying that Christian McCaffrey is MVP caliber. Okay, uh, if if he wins MVP, then then there's some problems in the NFL. But uh, yeah, the the Panthers are gonna win this game. They're gonna win it on the on the uh, the legs there of Christian McCaffrey. But also, Kyle Allen's gotta make some plays because this defense is really stout up front. So they're gonna have a they're going to have a good day against Christian McCaffrey, I would suggest. You know, it's been a couple of weeks since they faced off. Since they faced off. Yeah, that's correct. And the last time these two teams played, it was the Cam Newton show. And Cam Newton is not present, which is a good thing for Carolina, which means they have a chance to win this game. So I'm going to go with the Carolina Panthers in this game. I just don't like the Buccaneers. Uh, and, and I like Kyle Allen and... Christian McCaffrey a lot in this matchup. Next up, we have the 0-5 Cincinnati Bengals playing the 3-2, nice job, Jimmy, the 3-2 Baltimore Ravens. So, Cincinnati Bengals, huh? I've got my Andy Dalton jersey on the wall. I look at it for five straight weeks, and I say to myself, God damn, this team sucks. They, I mean, they're just not a good team. I don't know what else to say. You know, the Ravens, they've looked really good. Obviously, they've had their spurts. The two losses they had were not great games they played. I mean, they lost big to uh, Cleveland there. And then they lost to Kansas City. So, I mean, really, what do you want? I think the Cleveland game is more evident of who the, the Ravens are, but then again, it's a division game, so there's a 
There's a, you know, you take that with a grain of salt to some degree. But the the game against uh, Kansas City, you know, what do you, what do you want? It's freaking Patrick Mahomes, and that offense was on fire at the time. Yeah, I'm going to pick the Ravens. You know, Hollywood Brown, my good buddy, uh, the running back, playing quarterback there, uh, Lamar Jackson. Uh, I, I like them a lot. They're going to go to 4-2, and two, start streaking towards the playoffs now. I mean, they've got to start stacking some wins now because uh, those two two losses might be just enough to keep them afloat, you know, for the number two seed. But they're going to have to... They're going to have to play some really good football, and they need a big win against Cincinnati. And Cincinnati is just going to spiral and spiral and spiral. They're shooting for that number one pick. Don't be surprised if they take a quarterback, but uh, I'm taking the Baltimore Ravens. Next up, 4-1 and one, Seattle Seahawks visiting 2-3 and three, Cleveland Browns. So Russell Wilson has won five straight games against the AFC North, and the Browns got held to three on Monday night against the 49ers. The Browns just look all around terrible. I mean, Odell Beckham's not playing very well. He, he turned a buck. He, uh, he turned the ball over on a punt return on Monday night. Baker Mayfield threw a couple of interceptions, lost a fumble. The offense just they have a lot of questions, and there's not a lot of answers. And the defense, you saw what Matt Breida and all those guys in, in uh, San Francisco did to that defense. They completely riddled them on the ground. Jimmy Garoppolo finished a game with 46 passing yards. That's incredible. Like, how did that even happen? Browns are not a good team. And it's going to continue to show. Uh, it's, it's going to be quite evident come this Sunday when the Seahawks pick up a big win. They go to 5-1, and one, drop the Browns at 2-4. and four, And Freddie Kitchens... He better start uh, start checking his key card there like Jay Gruden because he might not be the head coach of the Browns for much longer. I don't think he's longed for that job at all. So I'm going with the Seahawks. Next up, the 4-1 Saints visit the 2-3 Gardner Minshew Magic Jacksonville Jaguars. So, uh, as much as I love Gardner Minshew and what he's been able to do for this offense in Jacksonville, you know, he almost led them to a win against Carolina last week, which would have been amazing, but, you know, Christian McCaffrey happened. And then in Seattle, you know, or excuse me, in New Orleans, I just looked at the S's and got confused. So, uh, in New Orleans, I love what Teddy Bridgewater's been able to do holding them afloat. Their only loss is in the middle of the Rams game, they lost Drew Brees. And Teddy Bridgewater didn't have time to acclimate to the offense, you know, in the heat of the moment, and they lost. But now, Teddy Bridgewater's on a roll and beat the Cowboys. He beat the whoever the hell else they beat, I forget. Uh, but the Seahawks, they beat the Seahawks. And now they're sitting pretty at 4-1. And, and, you know, the Jaguars, there's just a lot of questions. A lot of questions. You know, that defense is supposed to be really good. But, you know, they let Christian McCaffrey have his way with them last week. And, I mean, Gardner Minshew, he's the cult hero in, in Jacksonville. But I really want to see some more out of him against elite teams. So this game against New Orleans is going to really tell me a lot about him. I think the Jaguars, this is not a playoff year for them. But uh, it, it's, it's going to tell a lot about the future of this organization. If Gardner Minshew can continue to play well against teams as good as the New Orleans Saints. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the Saints in this game with all that being said. I'm just really mainly watching the Jaguars to see Gardner Minshew's progression and his maturity. But I like the Saints. I like Teddy Bridgewater. I like Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, all those guys. So that's my pick. Next up, the 3-2 and two, uh, Houston Texans taking on the 4-1 and one Kansas City Chiefs. So the Chiefs coming off a loss on... Ooh, a little, a little, a Sunday Night Football, which he does not have a great record in primetime games. And, I mean, I believe I mentioned that a couple couple, couple videos ago, talking about how Patrick Mahomes isn't great in primetime. However, in non-primetime games, he is undefeated. He is 15-0 and when the sun is shining. But he's got to face that extremely high-powered Texans offense. And, boy, high-powered are they. They... D uh, dismantled the Atlanta Falcons, dropped, what, 52 on them? 
incredible stuff. And Deshaun Watson was absolutely lights out. And Deshaun Watson's my second favorite quarterback in the entire NFL. You know, he's top five of my favorite players in the entire league. I love him. I've been watching him since, you know, he played at Clemson. Clemson's my favorite college team because of Deshaun Watson. I love the kid. And what he did on uh, last Sunday was just so incredible. And he's got, a, he's got a favorable matchup this week against the Chiefs. I don't really think they're anything particularly special. So I, I like what, what he's got to go up against. But then you look at uh, Kansas City. The offense, they started lights out. Patrick Mahomes was 10. He, he went through 10 touchdowns. Then over the last two games, he's thrown one. Eh, I mean, that's a bit of a bit of a uh, degradation, you know. Obviously, there's something going on there. I uh, don't know what it is necessarily. I mean, the Colts they they game plan very well for him, and the Lions game plan very well. The Lions almost beat them, but now they've got the the Texans, a really high power team with a great defense. I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'm going to pick the Texans in this game, and I know a lot of you guys aren't going to agree with me, but just listen to everything I had to say. The Texans' high-powered offense going up against a battered and subpar Kansas City defense, if we're being honest, versus a Chiefs offense that has kind of lost its way over the past couple of weeks, facing a defense that looked, you know, pretty good last week against Atlanta, and it's looked pretty good all things considered, all season. So I'm picking Houston in this game. I'm going to be wearing my my uh, Deshaun Watson jersey. That's where you can find me on Sunday afternoon. Next up, probably the game of the week. I, I'm telling you guys, I've looked forward to this game more than any other in, in many years for quite some time. The 0-5 Washington Redskins taking on the 0-4 Miami Dolphins. So you want to hear a pretty pathetic stat. This is the first matchup of teams that have not gotten a win in week six or later since 2004. These teams are bad. Jay Gruden just got fired. I mean, the Redskins haven't played horrible, horrible football. They've just had mismanagement at the quarterback position. And... Injuries, you know, injuries bite everybody, and they've gotten the Washington Redskins. But the Dolphins, man, obviously we know, we've chronicled what's happened to them over the first five weeks of the year. And I'm pretty sure they they would be 0-5, you know, if, if the bye week had put up more of a fight. But, <laughs> you know, because a lot of bad teams can lose on a bye week, including the Dolphins. No, I mean, that's a joke, obviously, but you know what I mean. Uh, the Dolphins getting freaking 50 or whatever dropped on them in week one. And, you know, they, they all things considered, you know, if you look at some of the games they played when they played uh, Dallas, they didn't look that bad, you know, because Dallas is overrated to begin with, you know, and they, and they didn't look that bad, which is, I don't know if that says more about, you know, Miami or Dallas, but, yeah, I mean, the Dolphins had some drops in that game. Some drops that, you know, could have made that game more competitive. I'm not saying they would have won, but it would have been more competitive. It's it's really tough for me to pick a winner here. I'm just thinking about it, you know. I'm, I'm, I don't know. And they're not going to play Dwayne Haskins because for whatever reason he's not ready, quote-unquote, which I guess Gardner Minshew and... Uh, Kyler Murray and Daniel Jones they're all rookies but somehow they're ready so I don't know what Daniel or uh, what Dwayne Haskins whole, whole situation is but every other rookie's been ready I'm gonna pick the Dolphins just because they're at home you know I mean I, I guess maybe there might be some sort of home field advantage at Hard Rock I, it's, it just it makes me laugh how bad these two teams are and the fact they get to face each other just makes me smile. But I, you know, I'm going to pick the Dolphins. Next up, we have the 3-2 and two Eagles versus the 3-2 and two Vikings. So, the second leading rusher in the National Football League, Dalvin Cook, gets to take on the NFL's leading rush defense. 
That's pretty cool, isn't it? Except for the fact that I don't think it's going to matter very much because I don't think Philadelphia's played any teams that were particularly good you know, other than Green Bay, and I guess that Green Bay game was what it was, but uh, Dalvin Cook's going to have himself a day. I think Kirk Cousins is going to open it up a little bit more like he did against the Giants last week. Throw it, you know, actually pass the first down marker a couple times. Maybe get uh, Stefan Diggs more involved in this game than he was last week. I'm going to pick the Vikings in this game. You know, they're at home. The last time the Eagles were at U.S. Bank Stadium, they won the Super Bowl, so I don't know what that says about it. <laughs> but I'm going to pick the Vikings. Next up, 1-4 and four Falcons versus 1-3-1 one, and one Cardinals. So the Falcons, as we just chronicled, got dismantled by Houston, and the Cardinals are actually coming off a win. Surprising, I know. They beat uh, Cincinnati on a last-second field goal. Kyler Murray got his first career game-winning drive, but I'm very happy for the kid. Uh, I'm going to pick the, the Cardinals in this game. The, uh, the, the defense there in uh, whatchamacallit land, Atlanta, is, and, you know, it's such a far cry from their Super Bowl season because they just look really bad, like they suck. And I know that's not much analysis to give you. And that's what I try to do is give you guys, like, great analysis. But I've got really nothing else to say other than the fact that they actually suck bad. And they're a, a, a bad defense. And then the offense. You've got Mohamed Sanu, Julio Jones, Matt Ryan, uh, Devontae Freeman. And you're still not winning games? The only team they beat was Philadelphia. And in that game, Philadelphia didn't have its top two wide receivers. You know, it's just it's pretty crazy to me. But I'm gonna pick the Cardinals. I like um, I like Kyler Murray. I think he's gonna start changing the culture around there. You know, quick, fast, and in a hurry. And one way to do that is to get active and get after this Falcons defense early. Maybe put up some points to start the game. You know, don't let them get back into it. So I'm gonna pick the Cardinals. Next up is the game you're watching right now, the 4-0 San Francisco 49ers and the 3-2 Los Angeles Rams. So, the 49ers, they're undefeated. They're the NFC's last representation in the undefeated category. The LA Rams are 3-2. The offense hasn't looked good all year. And their defense hasn't looked good for a majority of the season. And a lot of it, you know, people are like, oh, where's Aaron Donald? He's getting triple teamed on any given play. Like, that is how great Aaron Donald is when you can literally break down game footage and see Aaron Donald being triple teamed. The dude is, is elite. And, I mean, teams are doing everything they can to stop him. And he's obviously the best player on that team and on that defense. And when you stop him... You know, it, it's it's really tough to get anybody else going, especially when I believe, anyway, this defense in L.A. is subpar at best. And then San Francisco, they just find a way under Kyle Shanahan to exploit weaknesses in defense. They did wonders against Cleveland last week, and Jimmy Garoppolo just had to sit there and hand the freaking ball off. And the defense, they, I believe, had more turnovers in the game on Monday night than they had in the entirety of 2018. <laughs> like, the defense in, in San Francisco is crazy good. And I know a lot of people are calling this 49ers team great. Great. They're great. I want to call them great, but I need to see them play some top-tier talent like the LA Rams. And if they can go in on Sunday and beat the Rams, then I'll be a believer. And they're actually going to be my pick in this game, I think. Uh, we're going to get out to 5-0. and And the San Francisco 49ers are going to continue to represent the AFC, or excuse me, the NFC as its undefeated representative. And people are going to start opening their eyes to this team. They're a good team. People are going to start realizing it. So I'm going with the 49ers. Next up, the 2-3 and three Titans versus the 1-4 and four Broncos. Broncos just got their first win. But the Titans are allowing the fewest points per game in a season since 2008. 15.2 points. 
So obviously that defense is doing something right. And I feel kind of guilty. I haven't been able to watch very many Titans games. But, you know, I mean, they, they lost to Garner Minshew. And I don't know who else they've lost to off the top of my head. Uh, Indianapolis. So they've lost to some, some good teams and good offenses. But now they have an opportunity against a really bad Broncos team to get a, a big win and and start, you know, getting back to 500 and getting above 500 and maybe having a shot at the playoffs. Marcus Mariota's been playing pretty good football. I don't think he's turned it over yet. Um, they have a good core there in in Tennessee, but obviously, you know, it all falls on the wins and they don't have enough to really show it yet but if they can get a nice win against Denver which I think they will uh, they'll start being able to to get gain some confidence and maybe maybe beat some opponents that they shouldn't and start thinking about playoffs and I know it's only week six and nobody's really talking about playoffs so much but there are teams that you can sneak into a wild card like like Tennessee and I think they have the ability to do that and I think they're going to get a big win against Denver. Next up, the Dallas Cowboys at 3-2 and two versus the 0-4 New York Jets. So Sam Darnold is back from his disgusting mono. Uh, what is mono's full? It's like mono tuberculosis nucleocleic acid or something like that. I don't know. I don't know why that just popped into my mind as a question, but whatever. All right, so Sam Darnold... Uh, I was listening to some Cowboys fans talk, and they were like, listen, listen, this game's not a gimme because Sam Darnold is back. I'm like, okay, okay, whatever you say. Clearly, this is going to be a Dallas Cowboy victory. I mean, this Jets team is just atrocious. They haven't done anything right all year. And then, I, you know, I was in the building on their Monday night football game against Cleveland. I watched that game with my own eyes. And I visibly saw them be terrible. <laughs> like, and then in, 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 in 12, or uh, let me, let me just, let me get the exact number for you. In 11 days, I'll be in the building again to watch the Jets suck. When I get to watch them play the New England Patriots on Monday Night Football, the Jets are bad. I mean, that's they're they're bad, and the Cowboys' offense showed some some good signs of progression last week, late against the uh, Green Bay. The defense needs some work. That run run defense in Dallas is piss poor. I mean, what what Aaron Jones did to them last week was just unacceptable and then you've got a great running back like Le'Veon Bell coming in they're gonna have to do some some ch they're gonna have to make some changes you know scheme wise in order to limit Le'Veon Bell they can't just go out there thinking they're playing the Giants and have a good day I think the Jets offense is gonna get an uptick uh, because of Sam Darnold returning I don't know how much it's going to actually you know affect this game but I still have the Cowboys winning Next, the 1 and 4 Steelers will face the 2 and 3 Chargers. So I don't know what the Chargers are. They're I don't know, you know. They've really kind of been up and down all year. The defense has not looked so good. They've got Melvin Gordon back and they still can't win football games. And then on the other hand, the Steelers just lost Mason Rudolph for who knows how long. And they're going to be down to what their third string quarterback. It's just it's a tough matchup for both teams. Both teams not having great seasons. And I, I know a lot of people, myself included, thought the Chargers were going to, you know, be an AFC Championship contending team this year. But I guess not. Well, you never. I mean, you never know. They could start slow and then get hot. But um, I, I'm going to pick them in this game because I think they need this big win. I think they are a better football team than Pittsburgh at this time. They, they obviously have the better quarterback, and that's necessarily what matters in a football game. So I'm going to pick the Chargers in this matchup. They got to start. They got to start doing what Tennessee needs to do: getting some wins, start thinking about the playoffs, maybe get some guys motivated, and start working. Next up on Monday Night Football, it is the Detroit Lions at two one and one versus the Green Bay Packers at four and one. So the Packers, for all that's been made about them this season. They have really proven a lot of people wrong. 
first it was, oh, well, Rodgers and LaFleur can't work together. They hate each other. They're not friends. But now you see they're offensively, they're, they're pretty, you know, pretty good. Aaron Jones has gotten involved a lot, and it's it's really been able to save Aaron Rodgers. And I think this is kind of a good thing for Aaron Rodgers to have this kind of a great running game, because now it allows the it allows him and his offense, you know, to kind of take some breathers. It's not all on Aaron Rodgers anymore. He's got a, a great run game that'll kind of take, you know, the emphasis off of him and maybe allow him to to stay more fresh come playoff time and this is a good Packers team this defense what they did for the majority of the game against Dallas last week was incredible well, I think they limited them to three points in like the first three quarters or something crazy like that I like the Packers a lot in this game and I, and I, and I like them a lot you know this season but the Lions on the other hand when, when they were the uh, when they were 2-0-1, everybody was like, yeah, they're undefeated. They're they're amongst the NFL's elite. And I was like, all right, whatever. They tied with the freaking Cardinals. Like, help me, please, figure out why the hell you're drunk. And then, you know, they lost to Kansas City. And Kansas City, as I mentioned earlier, is not playing their best football. So they got beat by a Kansas City Chiefs team that's not even playing good. I don't know, man. It's just they're not a good team. I mean, they're they're fine, you know. But Matt Stafford, I think it's coming to the point where, you know, you gotta you gotta start thinking about who's next after Matt Stafford. I mean, I like the Packers a lot on Monday night, and they're my pick to win. So I'm going with the Green Bay of Packers, and I'm gonna be wearing my Aaron Rodgers jersey all day on Monday, even at work. So you look out for me. Look out for me. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be draped in green. All right, so that'll do her. That's week five. I hope you guys enjoy some great football this weekend. If you're like me and you're a Giants fan, you should start drinking now because tonight is not going to be very fun for any of us. It's going to suck big, big time. So if you're not a Giants fan, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your football. And I will try to return this interception which I will and that will be the final act of this game that we played and of this video so hope that you guys enjoyed uh, my little footage in the background my commentary and I hope you enjoy football I'm gonna go back to playing NCAA 14 now so I can have something fun to do that doesn't remind me of how perpetually bad the New York Giants are and I will catch you guys in the next video